now I'm, I'm ready. Okay, I'm Carrie. I'm going to just show how I make the bottom part of one of my baskets. I'm not very interesting to watch throw because I can throw really sloppy, and I do. Um, I usually start with, with, I don't know, a lot of cylinders, and I just start cutting. You make hollow cut. cylinders then? Yeah, just bottomless cylinders. I throw them on a bat and then let them set up and cut them off. And the first few that I made, you know, were all, all the tops were, all the rims were all parallel and they got pretty boring. So I figured out how to cut them. And I probably shouldn't have started with the shortest one. But we'll do, I don't really care if the, if the tops, you know, if the, if the sides match up, it doesn't really make too much difference. But I'll, you know, I just, I'll start, I like using different ones just for, um, just different finger marks and heights and stuff. I end up with a lot of waste. I recycle a lot of clay. But if you, I don't know which is, you know, if you make an arc like that, then it'll lay back. Um, one of those, if we go... I just have to think about this. This way. No, I just did that way. Yeah. This way. These are the more problematic ones. When I'm putting stuff together, they have. They'll lean in. And then. Sometimes I'll just angle them. Or I usually use a straight edge, but I didn't bring one, so. We'll just wing it. And then I just kind of play around with them and see how, obviously these are kind of big, see how the, the sides are going to match up and just work, work with the angles a little bit. Just kind of get them rough. Mm -hmm. And these where they where this one leans in a lot. It's always kind of fun to figure out where to make the curve and how to get this one that's leaning back to go with that one. And I'm sure there's some sort of mathematical <laughs> something or other that you know, some engineer could figure out that I can't, but I just have to play with it, and I end up cutting away a lot. But yeah, I've, I uh, then you score them and connect them anyway, so that kind of helps with the yeah. job too, huh? Um, yeah, I work on these generally in groups of maybe maybe four or five at a time and let them let them set up once I get everything where I want it then I'll go through and I don't have to do this now unless we want to add it to the to the video but I'll just score them and let them set up and then I clean up the <clears throat> And then did you just use water there, or are you using a uh, special there's, water? There's some slip, just yeah. just some clay and water. But everything has to, you know, has to get to a certain point, and then you move on, and then I'll add a, add a, just a little coil there and clean up the seam on the inside. Add a slab to the bottom, and then the part that I won't demo that's the hardest and the most challenging is the handles to get the handles to stay up is always real fun. So you use like foam or a lot of newspaper foam. or something? Yeah, a lot of foam, just um, little bricks of foam. But after there, it, you know, there was, there was a learning curve with those to figure out how thick I needed to make them. I'd have, if they're too thin, and I like to throw thin, but if they're too thin, they just slump in the mm. kiln. 
Do you throw the slab for the bottom or do you just roll it? I roll it. I used to throw them and I thought that's just dumb. But um, yeah, I, th I throw them, but I put I, I spray it down with water and I drag my fingers to, to give more marks oh, to it. Is it's how, you know, why there's, right. I don't know if you can oh, see you it make, as much Yeah, in you there. make marks in there. But yeah. that's that. All right, well, thank you very much.